Hello, my name is Roy J. White, also known as the Hillbilly Barber. I am from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm a fourth generation barber. That's about as interesting as that gets. <laughs> <laughs> my entire family was in the hair business of some sense. They all ran really small barber shops. And being from Louisville, Kentucky, we have this thing called uh, Churchill Downs in the Kentucky Derby, and I think my family was a little bit more excited about horse racing and who was gonna win horse races than uh, actually cutting hair. They always told me not to go into the hair business. It did detour me, but it also was a motivating point to where I felt that if I could control my own destiny, if I could look in the mirror and only point the finger back on my success, if I made it or not, that was something that really allowed me to fall in love with the industry, is the fact that there was some liberal availabilities to make your own schedules, to work with the public, because I was always a people person. I went through a 40-hour weekend shift so I could pay all my bills at home. So I worked from Saturday morning 7 a.m. to Sunday night at 11 p.m. straight through. And I went to school, barbering college, from 8.30 in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon, Tuesday through Friday. Then I worked as a personal trainer at the gym from 10 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning. So there wasn't a lot of time. However, I was able to save a little money and I thought, if I'm gonna go to barber college, I wanna open my own business. I wanna be a business owner. So I went directly out of school as an apprentice and opened my first business. I signed a lease two months before we graduated. I had to understand how to run spreadsheets and how to count my numbers. Biggest problem barbers had is we only knew how much money we made by how much money was in our pocket at the end of the day. When I started to study business, I really started to study on audiobooks. The only time that I had to truly study was on the way to work and on the way home. And it didn't matter if it was hot dogs or haircutting, if it was about business, I had to understand how businesses actually operate. And I did that for about seven, eight straight years. I still listen to a lot of audiobooks, but not as much in the mornings anymore. Now today, we have so many different opportunities to get coaching, to get help. You know, if you're not afraid to ask for help, there's plenty of people in our industry that are here to help. I had it all over to do again. I would probably not open a barber shop directly out of uh, barber school. Try to find a system while you're in school that when you walk into an apprenticeship, you're not blindsided and you have to have time. Don't be in a hurry. If I could have worked more on technique and how to speak to my guest, that's something different. I think your dialogue is something that's very important in this industry and you have to be able to communicate with different people from different walks of life. I would say to any young student, anyone that's trying to find the bridge between being a student and becoming an apprentice, find a mentor early. And a mentor can be many different things. You know, I had mentors that were outside of the hair industry. I didn't know how to pay my taxes. Find someone that did it right and listen. Two ears, one mouth.